the year is 1453. On his horse, Mehmed II entered Constantinople, the one and only city he had dreamed of capturing since childhood. He went straight to Hagia Sophia, a Christian cathedral with the largest interior space and the largest dome in the world, and converted it into a mosque. The last Byzantine emperor and the last Roman emperor, Constantine died fighting at the walls of Constantinople. How did a 21-year-old sultan be able to conquer the most impenetrable city in the world? Mehmed II was born on the 30th of March 1432 in Adirne, then the capital of the Ottoman state. His father was Sultan Murad II and his mother Huma Hatun, a slave of uncertain origin. When Mehmed was 11 years old, he was sent to Manissa with his two advisers to govern and thus gain experience per the custom of Ottoman rulers before his time. He was influenced in his practice of Islamic epistemology by practitioners of science, particularly his mentor Molla Gurani, and he followed their approach. The influence of Aksham Settin in Medmet's life became predominant from a young age, especially in the imperative of fulfilling his Islamic duty to overthrow the Byzantine Empire by conquering Constantinople. Following the collapse of the Western Roman Empire in the late 5th century, Constantinople remained the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. From the mid-5th century to the early 13th century, Constantinople was the largest and wealthiest city in Europe. The city became famous for its architectural masterpieces such as Hagia Sophia and opulent aristocratic palaces. The Crusaders had launched a military campaign to stop the expansion of the Ottoman Empire in the Balkans. They were trying to advance toward the Ottoman capital through the Zlatzitza Pass in the Balkan Mountains, where they met a strong and well-positioned Ottoman defence led by Sultan Murad. The battle ended with an Ottoman victory as the Crusaders were unable to break through the pass. Next, Murad turned east. The Karamanid dynasty was one of the most powerful emirates in Anatolia. Murad signed a peace agreement with them. Then, for the first and last time in Ottoman history, he abdicated the throne in favour of his 12-year-old son, Mehmed. Murad's abdication, thinking that he had achieved peace in the east and west in the summer of 1444, created an authority vacuum in Adirne and dragged the state into depression. His enemies reacted immediately, trying to take advantage of the situation. In late September, the Christian army led by John Hunyadi crossed the Danube towards Adirne, while a Venetian fleet blocked the Dardanelles. Karamanid saw their chance in the east and plundered Ottoman cities in Anatolia. Orhan Celebi, a second cousin to Mehmed, who was under the auspices of the Greeks in Constantinople and claimed the Ottoman throne, attempted a rebellion by crossing to Ottoman land. Edirne was the scene of violent rivalry between the powerful Grand Vizier on one hand and the other viziers on the other, who claimed that they were protecting the rights of the child sultan. When the dangers presented by allied European armies attacking Ottoman territories, Grand Viziers called back Murad and deposed the teenage Mehmed to replace him with his more capable father. The Battle of Varna took place on the 10th of November 1444 in eastern Bulgaria. The Ottoman army under Sultan Murad defeated the Crusaders' command by John Hunyadi. It was the final battle of the unsuccessful Crusade of Varna in a last-ditch effort to prevent further Ottoman expansion into the Balkans. Returning victorious from the Battle of Varna, Murad organised an expedition to Karamanids and forced them to make a peace agreement. Murad relinquished his throne again to return to Manissa, but a Janissary revolt in the empire supported by the Grand Vizier forced him to return. In 1446, while Murad returned to the throne, Mehmed retained the title of Sultan, but only acted as a governor in Manissa. He had a son called Bayezid from Gulbahar Hatun in his harem, who would become the next Sultan in line. 
Four years after his defeat at Varna, John Hunyadi, the richest landowner in Hungary, joined forces with Albania's war leader in an alliance that also included Serbia and Bosnia. The two armies met at Kosovo Field. In the three-day battle, the Ottoman army, under the command of Sultan Murad, defeated the Crusader army of Regent John Hunyadi. After the battle, the path was clear for the Turks to conquer Serbia and other Balkan states. It also ended any hopes of saving Constantinople. In the winter of 1451, Murad fell ill and died in Adirne. He was succeeded by his son Mehmed. When Mehmed ascended the throne again in 1451, he devoted himself to strengthening the Ottoman navy and made preparations for an attack on Constantinople. In the narrow Bosphorus Strait, the fortress Anadolu Hisara had been built by his great-grandfather Bayezid on the Asian side. Mehmed erected an even stronger fortress called Rumeli Hisara on the European side and thus gained complete control of the strait. Constantinople walls were impenetrable. The walls consisted of a double line of walls and a moat to the western side of the city and a single line of walls along the sea. They had towers, bastions, gates, loopholes, secret passages and underground chambers. Walls were defended by well-trained and well-equipped soldiers. Mehmed recruited a Hungarian engineer and cannon maker who built the largest and most powerful cannons for him during the siege of Constantinople. He built a giant bombard that could fire stone balls weighing up to 600 kilograms and had a caliber of 76 centimeters. The bombard was so large that it had to be transported by 60 oxen and 200 men, and it could only fire seven times a day. Constantine wrote to the Pope asking for help. Although he was eager for an advantage, Pope Nicholas did not have the influence the Byzantines thought he had. Furthermore, ongoing wars in the West and the defeat of the last Crusader army reduced the support to minimum. Some Western individuals, however, came to help defend the city on their own account. An accomplished soldier from Genoa, Giovanni Giustiniani, arrived in January 1453 with 400 men from Genoa and 300 men from Genoese Chios. As a specialist in defending walled cities, he was immediately given the overall command of the defence of the land walls by the Emperor. Mehmed arrived at the battlefields of Constantinople in April 1453 with 80,000 men, 70 cannons and 320 ships. Fearing a possible naval attack along the shores of the Golden Horn, Emperor Constantine ordered that a defensive chain be placed at the mouth of the harbour. This chain, which floated on logs, was strong enough to prevent any Turkish ship from entering the harbour. Despite some probing attacks, the Ottoman fleet could not enter the Golden Horn. Mehmed ordered the construction of a road of greased logs across Galata on the northern side of the Golden Horn and dragged his ships over the hill directly into the Golden Horn on the 22nd of April, bypassing the chain barrier. This action seriously threatened the flow of supplies from the Genoese ship and it demoralised the Byzantine defenders. The Ottoman army had made several frontal assaults on the land wall of Constantinople, but they were costly failures. After these inconclusive attacks, the Ottomans sought to break through the walls by constructing tunnels to mine them. Constantine had countermines dug, allowing Byzantine troops to enter the mines and kill the miners. Shortly after midnight on the 29th of May, the final offensive began. The Christian troops of the Ottoman Empire attack first, followed by successive waves of the irregular soldiers who were poorly trained and equipped, and Anatolian Turkmen mercenary forces who forced on a section of the damaged walls in the northwest part of the city. They managed to breach this section of walls and entered the city, but they were just as quickly pushed back by the defenders. Finally, the last wave consisting of elite Janissaries attacked the city walls. The Genoese general in charge of the defenders on land was grievously wounded during the attack and his evacuation from the ramparts caused a panic in the ranks of the defenders. Constantine's men eventually could not prevent the Ottomans from entering the city and the defenders were overwhelmed at several points along the wall. Constantine died in the ensuing battle in the streets alongside his soldiers. 
Mehmed II finally entered the city. Although looting and plundering for three days was customary, he declared the war over and ordered restoration and security of the city. One of the tasks on which Mehmed set his heart was the restoration of the city as a worthwhile capital of a worldwide empire. To encourage the return of the Greeks and the Genoese of Galata, which is the trading quarter of the city, he returned their houses and provided them with guarantees of safety. In order to repopulate the city, he deported Muslim and Christian groups in Anatolia and the Balkans and forced them to settle in Constantinople. He restored the Greek Orthodox Patriarchy and established a Jewish Grand Rabbi and an Armenian Apostolic Patriarch in the city. In addition, he founded a number of Muslim institutions and commercial installations in the main district of Constantinople. He moved his empire's capital and ordered the construction of Topkapı Palace, a grand palace that would reflect his power and glory as well as serve as his residence, administrative centre and treasury. From these nuclei, the metropolis developed rapidly. Fifty years later, Constantinople had become the largest city in Europe. Mehmed had assumed the title of Roman Caesar and at the same time described himself as the Lord of the Two Lands and the Two Seas, a designation that reflected his idea of the empire. During the quarter century after the fall of Constantinople, he undertook a series of campaigns or expeditions in the Balkans, Hungary, Moldova and even as far as the Crimean Peninsula. Mehmed the Conqueror died on the 3rd of May 1481 at the age of 49. He was buried in Istanbul.